In this video, I'm going to be looking at equations with fractions, problems like this one here. I've got three examples to go through. Made a little note here. Remember, when multiplying whole numbers and fractions, multiply the numerator by the whole number. For example, three multiplied by a quarter is three quarters. Um, so that's just three multiplied by one, not three multiplied by one and three multiplied by four. If you find it makes more sense, you can write the whole number as three over one, and then you're doing three times one and one times four to get three quarters. If you're not sure about that, I would suggest going back to revise uh, fractions before you go on to, you know, uh, equations with, with fractions in them. Okay, so let's look at this first example. We've got x over two equal to x plus five over three. The goal here is to find the value of x. So what number can we plug in here for x to make the left-hand side equal to the right-hand side? And in order to solve this, what do we want to do first? What's kind of making this tricky? It's these denominators, right? This two and this three, the fractions. We want to get rid of those fractions or clear the fractions. So how can we do that? Well, one way to think about it is, imagine you multiply this whole equation by two first. So let's go ahead and do that. So we'll multiply the left-hand side and the right-hand side by two. Remember, whatever you do to the left, you must do to the right. Um, because when we're solving equations, we need to keep them balanced. Okay, so x over two multiplied by two is just going to be x. And on the right, well, this is a fraction multiplied by a whole number. Remember, we just multiplied the numerator by that whole number. So we're going to have two multiplied by x plus five over three. I still have that three there, so now I want to multiply by three as well. Okay, so now we're going to mul multiply both sides by three. Um, so x multiplied by three is three x. Uh, two multiplied by x plus five multiplied by, divided by three multiplied by three is just going to be two multiplied by x plus five. Okay, so now we have no fractions. And just notice what we've done there. We've multiplied by two, then multiplied by three. If we were to try to do that in one step, what we could have done is multiplied by six, right? Multiplied by six. So sometimes you'll see that shortcut there where instead of multiplying by each denominator in two steps, you can multiply by the lowest common denominator of both numbers, right? That six is what we call the lowest common denominator. Um, in order to take a bit of a shortcut and do that all in one step. Okay, now we have an equation with uh, brackets and unknowns on both sides. I have a video on solving these types of equations. Um, so we already kind of know how to do this. Firstly, uh, we expand the brackets, so we're going to have 3x equal to 2x plus uh, 2 times 5 is 10. Then we want to bring all of the unknowns onto the same side. So we're going to subtract 2x from both sides. Subtract 2x. To get rid of that 2x on the right-hand side, so 3x take 2x is x. And then 2x take 2x is 0, so we're just left with 10 on the right hand side. And now we have the value of x, x equal to 10. We can check this. So plug that value for x back into the original equation. So 10 divided by two is five. We'd have five on the left hand side. Well, that's a strange color. I meant to pick this one. Five on the left, and then 10 plus five divided by three, that's 15 divided by three. We get five on the right as well. Okay, so um, that's how we're solving equations with fractions. Basically, we just want to get rid of those annoying fractions first and then uh, work with the equation from there. Let's have a look at another couple of examples. Here we've got 2x take 1 over 5 equal to 3x take 4 over 8. Here we're going to do this in one step this time. So instead of multiplying by 5 then 8, we're going to multiply by 5 and 8 at the same time. So what is five multiplied by eight? That is 40. So we're going to multiply by 40 on both sides. Multiply by 40. So here we're going to have, uh, well, let's write it all out firstly. And then you'll see, well, there's some shortcuts you could take here. So this is going to be 40 multiplied by two x take one over 
over five, and then 40 multiplied by two, uh, three X, sorry, three X take four, over eight. And now we can do some canceling. 40 divided by five is eight. So we're just left with eight times two X take one. 40 divided by eight is five, multiplied by three X take four. And now we're again at this point where we have brackets and unknowns on both sides, uh, which I've gone through in a previous video. So one thing you can check here is whether this number divides the number on the left. Here it doesn't, five does not divide eight, so we're going to expand the brackets out. Eight times two X is 16 X. Eight times negative one is negative eight. Five times three X is 15 X. Five times negative four is negative 20. Then we want the unknowns, the X's on the same side. So we're going to subtract 15 X from both sides. Subtract 15 X. 16 X take 15 X is just X. We still have that negative eight. 15 X take 15 X is zero. Then we're just left with negative 20 on the right. And now I want the X by itself on the left hand side. So add that eight to the right hand side or add eight to both sides to keep things balanced. So X take eight plus eight is just X. Negative 20 plus eight is negative 12. Okay, so we have a value of X of negative 12. Let's do our check. Plug that in. Two times negative 12 is negative 24. Take one is negative 25. Divided by five is negative five. Three times negative 12 is negative 36. Take four, negative 40 divided by eight is negative five. So that passes the check. Hey, we've got a lot of fives in here. The last one was positive five on both sides. This time it's negative five. Okay, the next example. We have X plus one over four equal to X take one over six. Now here we could do the same thing as we did in the previous two examples. We can multiply by four multiplied by six. So we could multiply by 24, or we could multiply by the lowest denomin common denominator of four and six. So the lowest common denominator of four and six, what's that? In other words, the lowest common multiple is 12, right? Four goes into 12, six goes into 12. Um, that's the lowest number they both go into. So here I'm actually going to multiply by 12. So you don't always have to multiply by um, these two numbers multiplied by uh, multiplied together. You can multiply by a lower number and maybe it makes it a bit simpler because you don't have to work with as larger numbers. Okay, so here I'm going to multiply by 12 on both sides and you'll see this gets gets rid of the fractions because here we have, um, well, let's write it all out again, um, but in the future, maybe you can skip this step. So we're going to write 12 multiplied by X plus one over four, and then 12 multiplied by X take one over six. Here we simplify 12, take, uh, 12 divided by four is three. So on the left, we have three multiplied by X plus one and 12 divided by six is two multiplied by X take one. Okay, so this step here, often I just do in my head. So because I'm multiplying by 12, I know that I'm going to be doing 12 divided by four, and I might just write this line here rather than this middle line. But if you're still getting used to this, maybe you want to add this line in, in the middle. And also the other thing I want to point out just before we finish this off, what do you notice about this equation and this one here, specifically these denominators? Well, we've ended up with this denominator on the left-hand side and this denominator on the right-hand side. Um, so what we've kind of done is multiplied the right-hand side by five and the left-hand side by eight. Um, this is sometimes called cross multiplication because we're kind of multiply making a little multiplication cross there multiplying the denominator on the right by the numerator on the left and the denominator on the left by the numerator on the right okay so cross multiplication 
And that's another little shortcut you can do to jump all of this and just get straight to this second line of working out. Um, here, we could have done the same thing and then divided by two. But anyway, let's keep, uh, let's continue with this problem. Uh, two does not divide three, so we're going to expand the brackets. This will be three x plus three equal to two x take two. Then get all of the unknowns on the same side, subtract two x, three x take two x is x. Negative 2 take 3 is negative 5, and we have our answer. Again, we have a 5. Okay, let's check that. Negative 5 plus 1 is negative 4. On 4 is negative 1. Then on the right, we have negative 5 take 1. That's negative 6 on 6. That's negative 1 as well. Okay, so that passes the check. Okay, last problem. This one actually has an expression in the denominator on both sides. And here I'm going to use that cross multiplication shortcut I just talked about. So I'm going to multiply this denominator on the right hand side and this denominator on the left hand side. And straight away I can say this is going to be 5 multiplied by w plus 7 equal to 15 multiplied by w plus 5. And I've skipped all of that multiplying by lowest common multiple, all of that kind of thing, and just got straight to this line. So it's a pretty handy way to think about solving equations with fractions. Okay, then we have an equation with brackets and unknowns on both sides. First thing you can check is, does this number five divide 15? Yes, it does. So we can divide by five here on both sides. Rather than expanding those brackets out, divide by five. Five multiplied by w plus seven divided by five is just w plus seven. 15 divided by 5 is 3 multiplied by w plus 5. Then expand these brackets out. We're going to have w plus 7 equal to 3w plus 15. Then I want the unknowns on the left hand side. Uh, so subtract 3w. Subtract 3w from both sides. w take 3w is negative 2w plus 7. 3w take 3w is 0. Then we are, we're just left with 15 on the right hand side. Then we want the unknown by itself. So we want to get rid of this plus seven. How do you get rid of a plus seven? You subtract seven from both sides. Negative two W plus seven take seven is just negative two W. 15 take seven is eight. Then we want to uh, get rid of this negative two multiplied by W. How do you get rid of a, a number multiplied by an unknown, you divide by that number. So we're going to divide by negative two. Divide by negative two. Negative two w divided by negative two is just w. Eight divided by negative two is negative four. And then let's check that. So substitute negative four into the original equation. Negative four plus five is uh, plus one. So five divided by one is five. Negative four plus seven is three. 15 divided by three is five. So we get five on both sides and that passes the check. Again, we get those fives. Okay, so hopefully that was helpful in solving equations with uh, fractions. Uh, this can get more complicated, of course, uh, but hopefully those few examples helps you uh, at least with, um, you know, beginning to understand these types of problems. If you found that helpful, please leave a like, subscribe if you want to see more content, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.